Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet, Pat Chat Edition. I'm Violet. And I'm Pat. We make these videos because Patrick finds interesting articles online and then he brings them to me and we kind of talk about whether they're good information that you guys should be following or, you know, bad information. Things that are going to make you want to scream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do we have today, Patrick? Uh, today we're talking about fiber. Uh, we often hear that on a, like keto is not necessarily good because you lack all the fibers coming from grains and fruits. And so I did find this little article that well, I actually the, that those eight food that are keto friendly, but like bring some fiber can to I, your diet. Can I just point out yeah. how hilarious I find it that because we're doing a ketogenic lifestyle, the assumption is that we're missing the fiber because the only place to get fiber is grains and fruit. What mm -hmm. about vegetables? Mm -hmm. Don't vegetables have fiber? Like, it's amazing to me that mm. this idea that we all of a sudden are not having fiber in our oh, diets, yeah. right? Did, yeah. did, are we, we still doing, go to the bathroom. Are they talking, the bathroom uh, but the thing is, are they talking about <laughs> uh, keto or are they talking about carnivore? Because there's a difference, right? When they say keto doesn't have fiber, I laugh because you still have 20 grams of carbs that you're eating in a day. What do they think we're eating? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. having like four teaspoons of sugar. So yeah, anyways, yeah. I'm sorry. So, I'm, I'm on a little bit of a rant because I just, I'm so tired yeah, of the hearing article, people like the article is, say I've, that I we don't. Started yet. <laughs> I'm just tired of hearing people say that we yeah, don't yeah. eat, eat, eat a fiber and that we no, don't but eat. Like, well, yeah. The article is just like, it, is actually a very positive article. Okay, so like, let's go. Let's say, go. Saying I had that to your diet and like, you're going to have the fiber. Maybe if you don't have them, maybe it's going to give you ideas of things to add. Maybe you didn't think about adding them and there are other there are other health benefits. Maybe we can if try to cover. If you're looking like, to spice up your meals, maybe yeah. we're going to have some new things to spice up your meals. But, okay. but first one, okay, I'm going to give like the, the number of grams of fiber versus the grams of net uh, net carbs. So we're going to see like Before which one. Before we know are... what it is. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good exercise. Okay. Which like, which one do you think would give me 10 grams of fiber per ounce? Like with per a ounce. cost. Yeah. Of two net, net, two net carbs. So one ounce, two net carbs. I'm not going to try to fiber. guess, but I'm just no? I'm just going to point out that that sounds pretty good so yeah. far. A so seed. it's obviously it's I'm going to give you it's a, a, seed? Like a seed. Yeah, I'm going to hide my tablet from you. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I mean, I kind of feel like it's chia, but like let's go with chia seeds. So okay. chia seeds, like number one, ten gram, like per ounce, ten gram of fiber. How much like the standard American diet recommends? I think it's twenty. Standard like, American. Like you, how many grams of fiber you should have? Like, uh, oh my gosh! Like, is um, it twenty five or thirty five? I don't even I remember, remember, but I, I I did know that number at one point. Okay. So two net carbs. Because I know, like, of... when you take um, Metamucil or whatever, <laughs> like when you look at the amount of you get in Metamucil versus what you're supposed to get, mm -hmm. like you have to eat a lot of Metamucil to, okay. <laughs> to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, True. but like, uh, and. Um, yeah, uh, but but it's a, it's a good like the, the chia seed are good because it's also a good Protein, source of uh, omega three. Oh, omega three. It's okay. a really fatty seed. So. Um, oh, you know what? If you're going to get some omega three out of ta taking chia, then that's worth it. I mean, I, I mm. I'm not really sure how it falls in terms of other things that yeah. like lectins okay. and etc. But you know, if you're going to get some omega threes out of it, then yeah, okay. I would definitely endorse that. Okay. Number, uh, what, like, uh, what you could do with like chia seeds. I don't particularly like use slash like them, but you can do a pudding with like, yeah, because they it. get uh, in they water, get, like, they get thick. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you're saying so, it like it's like, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 I know, I know they're good, but I should like use them more, but like, uh, yeah, I wouldn't just, necessarily like, just, say, like, I, I can't use them because they're high in iron. Okay. Oh yeah. So true. I but, um, okay. But I do know that they make like a good, they add consistency to things. Yeah. True. So like, even if you're making something that you would like to be thicker, even yeah. soups and whatever, like mm -hmm. you can, there's a lot of different places where you can add them and like mm -hmm. thicken up something without having to add a, um, a chemical. Yeah. Okay. Number two, blackberries and raspberries. So, oh, I said I, I wouldn't make you guess, but like uh, per cup, uh, okay, per cup, eight grams of fiber. Uh, the blackberries have six net carbs. The raspberry have seven net carbs. Both of them, eight grams of, uh, so of fiber. So it's a one-to-one, -one, like about a one-to-one mm -hmm. -one ratio. Uh, and, and, and like we know they're like, they're, they're the most uh, keto friendly fruits like out there, but you like, but, but yeah, yeah. You seven still have grams to be you, careful when you're eating them, yeah, obviously. You like you don't want to maybe, but I mean, like, you know, cup, but... I think the cool thing there is that if you're going to eat fruit, 
I mean, yeah. it's good that it's a one to one because you know it's like one of those things where w when you have when the fruit comes along with its own fiber, it kind of helps your body to manage it better. Mm. But obviously, all fruit comes along with this fiber. You, you, it's the fructose that you're really having to manage. But my, most importantly, maybe those fruits uh, are if you're doing net carbs are more important because yeah, they are in fiber, but like having a one to one ratio like it probably mean that it would be more like 60 grams uh let, let, you, let you me, can let eat me more of them I, th yeah, like, like you have to eat more of them to get to the number yeah yeah that's the thing so yeah. so be careful but once you get to doing... the number like so the, what i always try to help people to think about is like if i was going to eat an apple for example i thought like why would i do that but if i was going to eat an apple the, a medium-sized apple is 25 grams of carbs total 19 ish net mm. so if i was going to eat an apple i probably could eat like a quarter of that mm. right because 19 net so you're talking like five grams of carbs so that little piece of apple compared to how much blueberries how much mm. raspberries could you eat to get to five grams so technically and you look at it like that you get to eat more of this to get to the same amount as this but then i would suggest to you eat a normal amount of this so don't get to your five Mm -hmm. Like eat two grams of carbs of it and like, yeah. you know, and save yourself a little bit and you still got a nice little sweet treat. Yeah. Right. So that like when I when, like this is part of the reason I like people to think about like don't look at it as free because it's not free. Mm -hmm. There's still carbs in there, but I could eat what would be reasonable for an apple. If I were eating an apple, a medium apple, I can eat that same amount reasonable, but have less carbs in it. Mm -hmm. That's how I would look That's at that. Good. If I let myself get up to 20 grams then it doesn't matter. Hmm. Uh, another one that I do like, I actually do like to sprinkle over my salads. I haven't done in a while, but like, it's interesting because it's regularly, uh, it's um, it's high in fat, if I remember correctly. It has zero net carb and it has a lot of uh, fiber, flaxseed. Okay. So flaxseed is a good, uh, is a good, like you just sprinkle on your salad. And, and what's, like, the, what's the, the ratio? It's uh, like it's six grams of fiber for zero net carb. It's actually even better than oh, the chia seed. there's actually no carbs no in no net carbs because like if you read the oh, label so six to six. it's like um oh, maybe six to six. it's, it's going to be 10 grams of uh, of carb but 10 grams of fiber it's actually really wait, so what we said ratio. earlier for the other two was wrong because it's not one to one it's two no to one. it's it's two to one okay, but so. the flax seed you just like sprinkle like all over the place and and, and be fine with that <laughs> eat it by the spoon now it's a little bit like uh, well, kind of funny tasting, an interesting smell to it too by the way yeah, i'm not yeah. very fond of yeah I'm surprised, actually, that I don't see. I, I was thinking about that, uh, talking about flaxseed, but you're right. Like the the, the smell is kind of weird. Uh, I'm what I'm surprised not seeing here, and it has the same. I think it's even better than flaxseed. Is the hemp hearts? Mm. The, this one is a. Uh, it's like it when you had ground, uh, grounded. It, it's a. Uh, it's less tasty, and like the macros were really good. Okay. Um. Another one, like one of our fa uh, favorite, coconut. So yeah. shredded coconut. Um, what's, so, the, so what's the ratio there? The ratio, five grams of fiber per ounce for the cost is two grams of net carb. Okay. That's, so that's, that's like again, reasonable. Really, really yeah. Good. You know, and the nice thing yeah. about coconut is that it tastes good straight. So, you know, so many people, they want to snack on stuff. Like, I honestly feel like if you, instead of shredding it, if you like, do like slices of it, like thin mm -hmm. slices of it, you probably can make like an interesting, tasty treat. And so even, first of all, straight, mm -hmm. I love coconut straight. Like I yeah. can just eat it. It's, it's. Um, I haven't done it in a long time, so I don't know how sweet it would taste mm -hmm. to me now, probably be too much. But when I used to do it, like just taking pieces of coconut and eating it, that was my like amazing. You know what I do like, um, and and I, I maybe I applaud them for that, uh, and I'm even gonna name them because like there it's a really a good move on their their part, and everybody like every everybody should do that. Uh, the Cineplex like in Montreal now they do have uh, instead of going for the popcorn like in their displays they have uh, coconut little packets, and uh, and and yeah like it's. Um, for sure like for in a little packet there's four servings but like it's five if i remember because i checked it's five total carb minus 4.4 fibers so like a, a full packet like is, is going to give you like only two net, two net carbs uh, at the end of your of your, of your movie, movie. <laughs> and the nice thing so. that, that i was going to say about that is that if you make them at home so if you just buy your coconut and shred it like not shred it but slice it at home then First of all, eating it straight tastes great, but then you could also play with flavoring it, mm -hmm. right? Like you can add different spices to it and whatever. And yeah. so I think the only thing I would caution is that keep in mind, if you dry it, <laughs> you have to like, like when you, whatever you do it, when it's um, with the water in it, 
when you dry it, it's going to be lighter. So you have to be careful because the carb count doesn't change. So I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. Yeah. You can't you can't just have double the amount because you dried it. <laughs> no, yeah, true. Uh, next one on the list, pistachios. So we do like them, but like uh, maybe a little too much. <laughs> yeah. So, but like uh, three grams of fiber per ounce, but like the cost is five net carbs. So yeah. we know pistachios are a little bit more like in in the category of so, the carb beer <laughs> nuts. This, this is so why be I'm careful with the pistachios. This is why I've sadly taken them out of yeah. my diet. They're not as bad as um, <laughs> cashews, though. But like they're still a bit like high on the list. But I, you know, like I think. Well, I, I wouldn't say I take them out forever, but I think I'm trying to treat them more like treats now, like treats, once yeah. in a blue moon. I'll let myself have that. But like, yeah, it was, it was, they're kind well, of like, they're flavorful, right? Yeah. Like, like it, you kind of want to eat them. So oh, maybe a, a simple trick uh, to the viewers instead of um, buying them like us at Costco with all like the, um, mm -hmm. the shells removed, just buy them with the shells and like work your way to the pistachio. That wouldn't make, that wouldn't take me long. <laughs> I, they're not that easy. Yeah. That, they're not that hard to open. Okay. <laughs> Uh, next one on the list, uh, cauliflower, like one of uh, the keto fa favorite. Like if you don't, and there's so many ways to to like to prepare. You can make rice. You can like grill them, the boil mash them. That you make, so that's the really mash, good. Uh, the yeah, the shepherd's pie. So there, it's a yeah, a, a, a really nice uh, potato replacement for a bunch of things. Rice replacement for a bunch of things. So three grams, uh, three three net carbs give you a per like per cup. So one cup will give will, will cost you three net carbs, give you two grams of fiber. So I, I was expecting a little bit higher fiber, but like I think still. the only thing that I didn't enjoy uh, the with the cauliflower was a pizza crust. Oh the pizza crust, yeah. Now, that was right. the only thing I didn't enjoy. I, didn't I felt like that was the one mm. place where I was like, Yeah, not really, no. I think it's it's good straight mm -hmm. even. Oh, yeah. Like to eat, just eat cauliflower like that and grilled. Mm -hmm. But like yeah, I didn't I didn't enjoy right. it in a in a crust. Uh, okay, number seven out of eight, uh, red cabbage. So red cabbage, um, yeah, cabbage. I, I mean, I like cabbage, so I'm yeah. not going to... What does the numbers so come to? So numbers, uh, net carb. Okay, so we're talking about a cup again, net carb five and fiber two. So like you can see the, the ratio is a little bit like the cost is higher than like, like the... the uh, the fiber content but like uh, yeah the the crack slaw right? actually i think like the the one of the best thing we do with cabbage is like crack slaw no what else no? the best uh, thing that i do with cabbage is yeah. use it like a rice oh okay yeah like then there's another one that you can kind oh, of yeah, blend yeah, up yeah. And, and make it as a rice yeah. and I, yeah. I find that tastes amazing mm -hmm. yeah True. i know like crack slaw i'm like hey i'm yeah. crack slaw okay um next one uh, for those that don't know that's egg roll in a bowl yeah egg roll in a bowl yeah that's a keto um, connect um <laughs> a recipe recipe I, I remember correctly and the last one I have on the list are mushrooms. Mushrooms, like uh, per cup, two grams of net carb, which is, which is actually grams? pretty low. Yeah, net carbs, two grams, one gram of fiber. So oh, it's a okay. low, low, uh, low carb vegetable that you can have like, it's, like it's without, not bad. without no. a high cost. So, yeah. And it is good. So, and it has a lot of flavor to it. Yeah. Usually. So like, it's a, I think it's the kind of thing, and depending on what kind you get, because I know, I'm not sure if it's mm. for all of them, but they're saying that's the ratio. Yeah. But I think Portable, it's the shiitake Chicago, Crimini, ones yeah. that they give you something else in time or what it was that they give you. But they just here it say like boast a lot of minerals and vitamins, but like yeah, not. Yeah, it's one of the minerals that I'm like, thinking of that, like one uh, of the minerals that we're trying to get that it gives you, and I can't remember which one. Okay. So yeah. mushrooms are good. And Ping. thank you for not quizzing me on all of those because I probably no. would have gotten them all wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when we're doing a cage jank lifestyle, we are so focused on keeping our carbs low mm -hmm. that, and especially if we're doing total, mm -hmm. that we kind of forget that the car the the fiber in our body does help to mitigate the carbiness of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that it's unlimited, right? Like we still need to be cautious of like how much carbs we're eating because carbs mm -hmm. in the system, so in your blood, still do what they do. Right. So, but what would you say to the viewers that are mm, hesitating between calculating net carbs versus total carbs? I know you recommend okay. all the time to do to total carbs, but like, so what I would say is that if you're on the fence, so if you haven't gotten started, then and it's easier. So I'm going to say that like doing net carb is easier in the sense that you have a little bit more room to move in what you're able mm -hmm. to eat because you're taking the fiber out. So. Um, if you're just getting started and you're scared and you're hesitating and whatever, do I think it's a bad thing to start with net? No, not at all. For multiple reasons. The average person is doing between 
200 and 300 grams of carbs a day. Net carb actually works out to be about, for the average person, 50 total, somewhere around there, right? So if you consider that I'm going from three to, let's say 250 down to 50, that's still a great improvement. You're still going to get on that road to improve, to improved health. You're going to get on the road to improved metabolic situation. You're going to get on the road to improve weight. Maybe if that's something that, that you need to address, not every person who has metabolic issues is overweight. Let's keep that in mind. Right. But then if you eventually realize that I get like a certain distance of health benefit and then I get stalled, you still have room to move there before you start cutting the number. So like instead of doing net carb, which is right, mm -hmm. you could do total carb. And I think the first thing, if I was in that situation, the first thing that I would do is I would go back in my history. So for example, if you're using an app like Chronometer, I would go back in my history and I would take a look at on the days that I was doing 20 grams or less, I would go to my big page where it shows you everything and I would double check. So how many total grams was I doing to just verify? Was it around 50? Was it around 40? Like I would do that for a good number yeah. of days. And then what I would start doing at that point, I'm already used to eating 50 grams of carbs or less. Chances are by this point, I start bringing it down. Hmm. So I'd start doing total, but I would do if let's say that the chronometer tells me that I was most of the time somewhere around 40, I would do 30. Okay. And I was, I would do that for a little while to get myself used to it. And then either I'll go along and I'll be fine. And this is my number, or I'll realize, okay, I'm going along, but hmm, I'm still struggling. Then I'd really do 20. So 20 total. Hmm. Right. And you, there are people who have to do 10 total. There are people who have to do carnivore. It really will depend on how much inflammation. It really will depend on how much metabolic issue. It really will depend on how much weight that mm. you're trying to solve. And you know, like what, yeah. what is your, where's your body at right now? Now there's another piece of the puzzle though. And I'll tell you this. And I think that I want everyone to understand something. You're not in a stall until you've crossed a month, maybe even a month and a half of not moving on your weight. A week is not a stall. Two weeks is not a stall. What that is, is your body working possibly on internal stuff and not prioritizing how much you weigh. Even if that's your priority, your body is going to do what makes more sense for you. So of course, initially getting your weight down is helpful because you can walk easier and you can maneuver around with your family, your friends, your kids, right? But then eventually your body's going to start doing this thing where it's like, okay, you know, like the inflammation is not there and whatever. And it's going to start tackling that internal stuff. How's your liver doing? How's your pancreas doing? How are your kidneys doing? How's your heart doing? How's your, like all those internal organs that are super vital to your life down the road, your body's going to start saying, okay, is there any cancer creating in there? It's going to tackle that. Mm -hmm. All the things that it should have been tackling all along your life. It's going to start cleaning up that. So yes, is it possible that you do a month or so with no movement? It is possible. This is why I tell people, don't, don't worry about that. If you're still feeling good and eat for maintenance for a little while, right? And then you start again, right? Don't give up. Eat for maintenance, right? There's a difference. If you, if you give up and started eating sugar again, your body's just going to put the weight back on. Right. So I do em encourage everyone to consider that it's not a, a straight line. <laughs> right. Your body is, is smart. It's it's smarter than all of us because it knows that those carbohydrates floating around in your blood will kill you. That's why it puts it away as fat. So it's smarter than all of us. Right. Because we're all worried about the weight, the weight, the weight, the weight doesn't matter. If you're dead, mm -hmm. who cares yeah. <laughs> how much you weigh? Right. Your body is smarter than all of us. Yeah. It's focusing on doing the thing that you need the most. Hmm. So yeah, that's what I would say. I would say that if you, if you start with net and it's working well, I did my entire process with net, hmm. right? Now I'm not bothering to do net because I'm always under like, well under like, like really well under. So I don't even have to worry about it anymore. It's like the, the, the biggest thing I have to eat is a big salad and I know exactly how much is in it and it's well hmm. under. So I don't worry about that anymore. But for those of you who still have like varied things that you're eating and you, yeah, weigh it and check and just make sure that you're under 20, whether you're doing 20 net or total, regardless, 
You know, there are lots of days that I do carnivore days and I just eat meat. It's okay. Like, it doesn't have to always be the same. And as a matter of fact, throwing your body curveballs helps you to, like, stay stable. Because as soon as your body gets used to something, it stabilizes and it gets used to it. And then all of a sudden, you could be in a position where it's slowed down and it's not allowing you. You know what I mean? So you always want to also throw your body some curveballs. Every once in a while, I'll do a day where I'm eating well above like 2,000 calories, like well above, like maybe 3,000, 3,500, just because to just throw my body that curveball of you don't know what's coming all the time. And of course, I have my mm -hmm. fasting days, which throws at the curveball of nothing, mm -hmm. right? And then most of the days I'm around my normal number of 2,200-ish calories. I'm throwing numbers out there just so you can understand, mm -hmm. right? But like, you know, if you do that to yourself, so I don't do 3,500 often because Right? It's, a it's, a lot lot. <laughs> it's a lot of food. It's a lot of food. Right? But it's like if I mm. if you choose something that's dense and you eat it, mm. right, you can get it, you can get it done. So because if it's dense, you will finish eating you people don't realize this. And this is part of the reason that a lot of people gain weight. When you are eating food, there's a delay between it going in your mouth and the signal coming to your brain to say you had enough. Because I understand that, on the days that I want to get thirty five hundred in, I make something dense. Because I know that I can finish eating it before the signal goes up to say, oh, Violet, you had enough, mm -hmm. right? I'm not sitting there eating, oh, I'm going to have some nuts and oh, I'm going to have this and oh, I'm going to have that and like, and, and, and like feeling full. I mm -hmm. never let myself get to the point where I feel full because mm -hmm. that's creating a, another problem of us chasing that full feeling, mm -hmm. right? I don't engage that full feeling anymore. It's creating the story where, hmm, this very small thing that I know is high in, in dense in, in, in energy, I'm going to eat that, hmm. right? And it could be something as easy, easy as, and again, not sponsored, I'm just saying this out loud so you can know, eating a regular meal and finishing up with some keto brick because it's high and mm -hmm. dense in energy, right? Something like that. So it just helps me to kind of push myself that a little extra bit to know that my body today got more so that I'm not going to be in um, homeostasis like mm -hmm. for too long. Sure. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I, I love when we're able to share ideas for people mm -hmm. that maybe you're not sure what to eat. These are some interesting other ideas mm -hmm. of things you can put on your plate that are, are going to help you to have some flavor, mm -hmm. some different flavors. I love talking to my wellness warriors. I thank you for being here. Always happy that you guys come by and comment and, you know, ask questions. I want to know if anybody tried any of those. Mm -hmm. If you use them, I, like I'm thinking salads. Yeah. I'm thinking yeah, like, I've like what, are, what are some maybe different ways that you mm -hmm. use some of those foods that Patrick was talking about today? Um, again, some of them I don't use just because of the iron content, but maybe if you can share like, some yeah. stuff. If it's not only for the eye fiber, actually, what food do you put into your diet that gi gives you a low net carb total? Actually, yeah. that might be interesting. That might be interesting I know some know. nuts are, are really like high in carbs, but high in fiber, giving you a low net carb. But like, yeah. share share those food with us. And you also mentioned um, hemp seeds. So that's uh, one that. Hemp hearts, yeah. yeah. hemp hearts, sorry. Yeah. So it'd be nice to share that information so that we can all learn from each other. Mm -hmm. I have a Patreon account, Patreon slash Valiver. Everybody who's new here, subscribe, mm -hmm. right? We do these videos every week. And I actually have another video that comes out on Mondays. So, you, you know, subscribe, click the bell, do the things. I love making these videos for you guys. We love making these videos mm -hmm. for you guys. It's a pleasure to talk to you and share information and really just encourage everyone, do your best, right? It's a day by day thing. Do mm -hmm. your best and your health will improve. Right? We are living proof of that. Mm -hmm. If you do it day by day, your health will improve. And long term. And if we can do temporary. it. Absolutely. And if mm -hmm. we can do it, you can do it. Right? Uh, thank you for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet. Pat Chat Edition. See Talk you to you next week. time. <laughs>